Hi everyone, tonight I want to do a quick demonstration of a new version of SkyTrack that I uploaded tonight, version 1.7.4. It has a significant new feature that's useful for tracking comets. And of course the green comet is, uh, is visible right now and of, uh, of great interest for uh, trying to image. Fortunately I've had a lot of cloudy skies, but tonight I had um, maybe some light cloud for about 10 minutes that uh, I was able for the first time to do some testing on the new feature. So we're going to go to astronomical objects, we're going to go to the comments tab and I'm downloaded the comet orbital elements and this is the comet of interest and so I have a filter on right now that only lists comets that are brighter than a magnitude of 8. Um, I can do uh, a slew to from this screen and go to the comet but at this point all I have is the calculated location. I don't have any information telling me the rate at which the comet is moving and so you can see up here we're just tracking at sidereal rate um, which isn't going to work very good for longer exposures because the comet is moving at a different rate than the than sidereal rate. So what I can do here is download uh, more data from the GPL Horizons website for the comet that we have selected here and it's going to download um, a file that has rate information in it. So then we're going to go to the JPL custom tracking tab and there's my download that I just downloaded. Um, so we can download all sorts of objects from JPL Horizons. This tab uh, lists all the major bodies that they have in their database. A major body being like uh, planets, moons, um, spacecraft, so comets and asteroids, um, they call minor bodies, and both those objects are downloaded from JPL from the Comet and Asteroids tab. But there's our comet, and uh, looks like I'm already pointing to it. Um, so now we have two tabs here. Before we just had the uh, ASCOM custom tracking, now we have custom tracking using PHD2. So again, using ASCOM custom tracking, um, your mount and ASCOM driver has to be capable of that. More specifically, it has to be able to set custom rates for the right ascension rate and the declination rate. Um, not all mounts have that. And it, even if it does, it only really works well if you're using a periodic error correction or have a mount that has uh, um, encoders absolute encoders. Uh, so if I did I could just click that custom rate tracking and um, it slowly comes up to speed and you can see we can continue to track um, the comet very accurately. If your mouth doesn't have that capability this is going to stay grayed out when you're connected uh, to your mount but now we have this new feature with uh, ph2 custom rates so in phd2 it has a tool called comma tracking and what this is uh, they term it as a, a lock shift so it's still going to lock into a star but then it's purposely going to move away from that star at the rates that are specified in this dialog here. And so with SkyTrack now we automatically have a um, interface uh, integration to PH2. So I'm going to connect PHD2 and from the JPL file right now it's determined that these are the rates that the common is moving at. Here's my status of PHD2 so lock shift right now is disabled. If I clicked enable there, you would see this becomes enabled. But I don't have to do that in PHD2. Um, so we're going to click this box now to, uh, well first of all I should, I should go over the sequence of what you do. So we're going we're gonna to first slew to um, the comment and then we're going to go into PHD2 and if you're familiar with PHD2 we're going to uh, go through all the steps here. We're going to start our looping. We're going to select the uh, guide star. 
And again, this is an indoor test, so I can't actually do that because I'm not looking at any sky. And we're going to start guiding. And so it's going to start normal guiding uh, on that star, but as soon as we send it rates, it's then going to purposely move away from the guide star at the specified rates here. So we'll see what happens when I click Enable. You'll see Lock Shift is now enabled. So you can see it's enabled now. This is a button now to disable it. And you can see SkyTrack sent these rates automatically over to uh, PHD2. And normally you wouldn't even have to have this comet tracking window open. I just have it open for um, demonstration purposes. Uh, so SkyTrack will continue to look at the uh, JPL file. And as soon as these rates uh, change at all, it'll automatically update PHD2 um, immediately. And so now we would actually be uh, guiding or, or tracking on the comet instead of the guide star. Once that guide star gets out of range of PHD2, it'll automatically lock into a new star and continue to move away from the new star at the rates here specified. Um, so I've had a lot of cloudy skies and tonight was the first night I was able to, uh, to test. Um, seeing was horrible. I was still looking through real light cloud cover but I was actually surprised at how well it really did work. And uh, we'll take a look here at my images that I took. So the bottom left image is with sidereal rate only. So you can see the, the stars are nice little pinpoints. These are all 45 uh, second exposures. And then uh, here you can see the comet head and the comet head is a little blurred because again, it's moving at a different rate. Um, so top right, that's using custom tracking through ASCOM. So you can see now we have a nice tight uh, comet head and we can see that the stars are moving because of the custom rate. And then the top left is using the PHD2 integration using uh, a feature in PHD2 called lock shift. So it locked on a star but was deliberately moving the star at the rates that we uh, told it to move away. And you can see it did quite well, uh, very similar to uh, custom tracking. Um, I th it's, it's hard to say because it was such poor conditions and there was one faint little guide star, but it looks like custom tracking did just a slightly better job. But uh, again, I was really impressed at how well PHD2 did. Um, you know, a huge improvement over just tracking at sidereal, sidereal rate. And if we zoom in a little more, no, oh, that's not what I want, this one. Okay, so this is a, a 10 to 1 zoom in. And again, you can see sidereal rate down in the bottom left here is just a mess. Um, the nucleus of the comet is, is quite uh, smeared. Um, custom tracking, a really good, nice symmetrical um, nucleus on the comet. And PHD2, almost as good, not, maybe not quite as symmetrical, but I mean, we're really pixel peeping here. And this was a 45 second, or yeah, 45 second exposure, which is uh, plenty long enough for this bright comet. And again, I'm, I'm shooting here through uh, cloud cover. So just a quick rough test. It might not be fair to PHD2 because the seeing was so bad and I had one faint little guide star to track on, but, but it really did well. And again, it's going to be a huge improvement over just trying to image at sidereal rate tracking. Um, so that's it. Uh, again, um, I was in a rush to get this out. 10 minutes of testing tonight through a bit of cloud cover but it looks like it's really going to work um, quite well. Uh, one other thing as far as setup, uh, normally you don't have to touch the setup. The default value should work okay. But in the setup screen here, you can see we can specify the, the server uh, URL that PHD2 is running on and the port. These are both defaults and uh, I think for most users, you're not going to have to touch that. Uh, so anyway, um, I hope that helps and I hope you have clearer skies than I do and uh, 
Hopefully you'll find this a useful tool in doing some uh, common imaging. Thanks.